Hi, I'm Holly Pike. If you'd like a trial of the Generations software that I use for digitizing, please visit TryGenerations.com. This video is a recording of a live video I did for my previous students. You may hear references to You Can Digitize or YCD. That's my old website that is now closed. My new website is digitizingschool.com. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. The punch tools are really cool tools. And when you really let your imagination go wild, you can create some fun things with them. I think I did this with class one, maybe two, and I'm not sure about three. So we're going to do a webinar on them. And you all will be able to go back and refer to this as much as you like or as often as you like. So I'm going to go through the punch tools. The punch tools are over here in the green bar. They might be on the other side of this color chip bar, or they might be over here on this side, but it's all the little green shapes. Now, to these punch tools, I also consider the square, the circle, and the ellipse a punch tool because they all function the same. If I take my circle tool to make a circle with the circle tool, you notice my cursor changed, I'm going to left click and drag until my circle is the size that I want it and let go of my mouse button and there it is. Okay, if I have my circle tool and I hold the control key down and left click and drag, now I get ovals. Okay, I get ovals. I release when I'm done with that. The square, if I left click and drag, I get a square. When I'm happy with the square, release the mouse button. If I have the square and I press my control key, now I get rectangles. Okay? I get rectangles. I release my button and there's my rectangles. That's how the predefined shape tools and punch tools work. Let's get rid of that and open a new document. So with that in mind, I'm going to select the first one. I remember this little box that is very annoying to all of us. This is where this little box really shines and really comes in useful. So if you're taking your little box and you're hiding it way over here so you can't see it, pull that little guy right out and let's investigate and explore this tool. If I click on area, I can now do the drop down and I can either do a line or an area. So if you just want a line box, you can get just a line. If you want a fill or an area, you can get an area. It's going to look the same until we generate it, but you can kind of change those those things a little bit. We're going to leave it as an area. We're going to left click and drag, release when I get it the size I want it. Notice it did not generate right away. That's because when I hover my cursor over that little bitty blue box, my cursor changes to like a little porcupine. And when it does, I can left click and drag. I can drag it into a circle. Or I can drag it into a square. Or anything in between. When I'm happy, I'll hit my enter key. And it generates. You can still change the size of it and everything that you want to do afterwards. Just remember to generate. So that is the, let's see what they actually call it, um, round corner rectangle. Okay, you can make a rectangle or a square using that. Let's see what happens if I use my control key. Well, it's easier to get a rectangle if I use my control key. Actually, I get a rectangle. See that? No control key. Okay, if I hold my control key down, oops, go away. If I hold my control key down, it works just like the other one. Okay, all right. The next one is the punch ring. If I click on this, I again can get a line or an area. I'll left click and drag release when I get to the size I like, 
And now, again, if I get my little porcupine where they stick out, I can change this to really tiny or really big. Let's make it about there. And now I can take this and change the shape. So hopefully you're saying, wow, there's some cool things we can do with this. Hit enter, and it generates my punch ring. Okay. Now we have the spiral. And the spiral, we need to make our box just a little bigger because the spiral has some other settings to it. We can do just a line with the spiral, but we can do basting, blanket, buttonhole, double run, motif, run, running cross, satin border, and a triple run. We have all these choices for this tool. Colors, of course. We can expand, change these numbers to expand, how, change how the spiral expands. We can change the starting point. We can change the ending point. Okay, so you'll want to play with all of those things to see what you can do. I'm going to left click and drag, and it's going to make a spiral. If I grab it here, I can make more distance or less dis dis distance between the spiral. If I grab it here, I can unwind it a bit or wind it up some more. Remind you of a 45 record if you're about my age. Or you can drag it here and take some out of the center. Or put it back. Hit enter. And there's your spiral. Now cool things that you can do with the spiral is you can put lettering around the spiral. Or you can put a motif around the spiral. Or pretty much anything you want to do you can do with the spiral that you can do with a line. You can change it to a single run or any of these things if you change it to a motif border you get that. If you change it to a blanket stitch, you're going to get that. Oh, that's interesting. That's a buttonhole. That's kind of interesting. Um, come up here to satin border. Get what looks like that record player licorice. I kind of have record players and, and food on my mind tonight for some reason. Okay, so that's kind of how the spiral works. I'll put that up there. The next one is the star, and we have some things that we can do here too. We can do an area, an auto, or a line. I'm just going to do an area, but look right here. It says N. That's the number of, of points on your star. Okay, so for now, I'm just going to do a five point star. Lift my mouse. Each one of these will do something different. Kind of looks like a, a what's that a proton or something? Make a proton. That's your star. And hit enter. There's your star. Okay, but let's go back and investigate this. What if that's a five point? What if we wanted a seven point star? There you have it. The same capabilities. And see some possibilities there for um, ways to use that. The next one is just the um, the line star here, and you can change again the points on the on the polygon, or you can change this. I think you can change the step. Yeah, change the step from one to two. I'm going to leave it at two because that's the default. I like to show you the default before I start playing with any settings. So here's your line star. You can change this setting up here. Hit enter. And now you have a line star. You can, I believe, change these to whatever you would like. If you want a motif border, you can you can change it to that. You can do whatever you like with it. Any questions so far?
I don't have blanket stitch. Is it called something else? Oh, okay, good. You found it. I was going to say, if you have generations, you have blanket stitch. Yeah, Bonnie. I, Bonnie says she didn't realize that you can put more points on the, on the uh, star tool. Yeah, I like that feature because I used to, before I learned that, I would take this star, I would copy it and paste it, and then rotate it like that, and then merge it. You can still do that if you want them specific distance apart, but you don't have to do that anymore. So that's that's pretty cool. Okay, the next one is the what I call the Pac-Man tool. It's really, um, what do they call it? A sector arch tool. I call it the Pac-Man tool because it, it kind of looks like a Pac-Man when you make it. You can grab this and change it to wherever you want it or move this to wherever you want it. But he kind of looks like a Pac-Man to me if we make him yellow. We got a Pac-Man. So <laughs> that's what I call him. I call him the Pac-Man tool. Okay, if we look at the settings here, we've got an area or a line. And then down here we've got sector. We can change it to an arch line, an arc line, an arch, or a sector. So we just did the, the sector, so let's look at what we get with an arch. Look at that. Now we just get a flat, a flat edge. So think about if you needed a half of a circle, something like that, to do something, to finish something off or do something. And let's look at the arch line. Well, look at that. You get an arc. Look at that. Pretty cool, huh? But now there's nothing assigned to this, so let's go ahead and assign a triple run to it. And uh, so with the line, you're going to need to assign some type of, of line to it. Okay, you're going to have to have something like um, a double or triple run assigned to it so that it actually has stitches. Okay, the next one is the moon. And the moon, again, you can do area and line. And that's all the settings you have. But you have the moon, and you can change the shape of that moon. So you can have just a sliver of a moon, or a crescent, or you could go to almost a full moon. <laughs> you could just play with this and do <coughs> excuse me, any number of things that you'd like to do. <laughs> Let's move our little Pac-Man around so okay. Good. Move these guys. Now we have the cross, and again you can do an area or a line. And the cross is just exactly that. It's a cross. <coughs> Excuse me. You can make it skinny or just with a notch in the corner. Or you can make it fat on one side, skinny on the other side, or balance them, or whatever you would like to do. When you're happy with your shape, release it and hit enter, and there's your cross. I haven't really found a good use for that one yet, but I'm sure if we were to play with it for a while, we could come up with something. Okay, I'm going to make some of these smaller so that uh, I can get them on the screen, kind of. If you haven't played with these tools, um, these are a great way to learn things about your software and then play with the other tools like divide with the line, divide with the curve, and, and make other things. Then you have the cross arrow. Again, a line and an area. The cross arrow has arrows on it. Up here, you can change the arrow. See, I'm just moving my cursor around to see what we get. And then this one, OK, you're happy, hit Enter. Then we have the different suns. 
This one is Sun O, Sun Zero. Again, a line in an area. But look at right here. The number of outer triangles between 3 and 16. So you can change that. Their default is 8, so let's just do one with 8. When I hover here, I can make this smaller or larger. And if I hover here, look at how the center changes. You can do all kinds of different things, if you like, with that. The next one, again, an area and a line. And we can change the number of outer triangles on this one. But this is the default. Here you can bend and bring it down and out. bigger or smaller. Enter when you're done. And then the next sun. Go ahead. Again, same exact settings, but a little different um, a little different result. You can make it straight. Lots of different things that you can do with those. And then last but not least, the heart. You can do a line or an area and drag and place your heart. This will adjust down here. This guy up here. Hit enter when you're done. That's all your punch tools. And you might think, well, wow, I'm not really sure what I use those for or how useful they would really be. But once you start playing in your software, you will start finding uses for them. One exercise that I think, I'm not sure which class, you guys can verify for me, I gave an assignment to was to create things in the software without using any artwork. And that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to create some things without using any artwork at all and show you how some of these tools can be applied and used to make things you might not expect. Let's see, let's let's do let's do a haunted house scene. How about that? No artwork. No artwork at all. A haunted house scene. I'm going to start with my rounded corner rectangle. Okay? I'm going to make it squared off and hit enter. Now that I have that, I'll just left click and I'm going to make it a little bigger and generate. Okay. Let's make it let's make it purple. So it looks like it's nighttime and it's a haunted house. Okay? All right. Now the next thing we're going to do is we have to make this look like a house. So Let's right click and go to our view outline icon and edit outline mode. Now remember if you grab these lines anywhere, you can can do that. Okay, I'm gonna generate. So that's the beginning of our haunted house. Now let's go ahead and put a top, little little peaks on the houses. So again, I'm going to use my square, go out, make it flat. I'm going to divide with a line. Now remember, when you divide with a line, they're grouped. So ungroup them. Hello. I'm going to take this one over here. Remember all of our alignment? We did a, a webinar on alignment. Let's 
overlap it a little bit. Double click to rotate. Okay, we need one more. Enter. Oh, I didn't make the corners round. So let's delete it. Now I could use my box tool over here. I just chose to use the tools that we were talking about. So here's my draw box. Let's divide it in half. Enter and escape, generate. We're going to ungroup it, left click outside, grab the piece we want. You can see that I'm overlapping just a little bit. Let's delete this one. Okay, so let's select these. Let's make them yellow. Okay, so now we probably need some windows, right? So let's make the windows real quick. Copy and paste. Copy and paste. Let's make this one a little smaller. And generate. Now we'll make the windows a little differently for each window. I'm going to select them all. I'm going to put an area or an outline around the area edge with a triple run. And I'll show you why in a minute. Let's go back to our windows. Remember the gradient fill that we talked about? And I said there were some really good uses for gradient fill. This is one of them. Go to accessories, gradient shading. Our first color is going to be yellow. Second color is going to be orange. I'm going to disable the underlay because I don't want it crossing the opposite direction. Okay, now let's just play with these settings. Notice how your settings change up here a little bit. Click OK, but nothing happened. Generate your stitches and you get your windows. Let's grab these guys and if you don't know how to move something to the bottom of your film strip, select them, right click and say move them to the bottom. Okay, now you can see they're right on top. Let's change them to black. Okay. I'm going to go up to about 400 here. Let's make some different windows. I'm going to hold my control key using my line tool. See how nice and straight my line stays? Like that. Same thing here. Halfway. Like that. So that's my third window. Select them all. View outline icon. Right click and merge. So now that window is merged. Let's go up here to this one. We'll just go to 200 on this one so that you can see. I'm going to select my line tool. And let's just make, what are they called? Jealousy windows, kind of? Kind of like a vent in that top scary window. Select all the pieces, view outline icon, right click, merge. Notice they're all black. I put them in as blue, but they're all black. Now on this one, let's just make this a slider window and have a couple cracks in it. So we're going to take these, the outline icon, merge. Got three different windows just using the line tool and the gradient shading. Questions? No questions. Okay. So what else should we put in the haunted house? I guess we need a door, right? Okay, so let's make a, a 
to make a door. My windows might be a little big, but that's okay. I'm going to left click and drag my door down to the bottom. Generate my stitches. Let's change the angle a little bit. Now I don't like just that plain old flat door, so let's select it with a left click and look what lights up over here. If I select it with a right click, that's not active. If I select it with a left click, it is. And what is this, you might say? This is our reshape object box. If you haven't used this, this is a pretty cool tool. You can reshape your selected, with a left click selected, items to any of these shapes. So let's just use, let's use this one. Say OK, and you can see the shape that it's going to be. At this point, you can pull this down or do whatever you'd like to do with it. Like that. Hit Enter, and it makes your door. OK, let's make it a little shorter. and make it brown. Okay, so what else should we add to the house? Can you change the angle on the gradient fill? Yes. Yes, you can. Oops. Okay, you can change anything. What else should we add to the, well, let's, I'll create voids here until you type in something that you want to add to the house. We're going to create a void. I'm just left clicking to create those voids. Okay. Bushes in front. Okay. Bushes or bare trees. Either one is okay. But um, let's, let's do a bush. How about that? Let's do a bush. Uh, let's do... If you cross over, they don't like it. Okay, let's make it green. But I wouldn't want it solid because that would mean that I was kind of, you know, kind of an amateur and I don't, you know, I don't want to have just a solid old tree. So let's make it this maybe. Okay, so now we've got a bush. Let's put. Oops, go away. There. Change the color. And we have a bush. Doorknob, spider webs, pumpkin, a cat. Okay, a cat's going to be a challenge. Um, a face peeking out somewhere, maybe a ghost coming out the door. How about adding a ghost? Neat. Okay. Let's do um, a doorknob. Put a doorknob right there. Make the doorknob black. Okay. Do we want a window in the door? We can go back to that. Um, let's see. How about a, 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 a how about a spider web? I'm gonna take my line tool. I'm just putting lines in that then I can merge. And, and believe it or not, spider webs are pretty um, pretty balanced in terms of how those little guys make them. It's pretty amazing. 
Okay, so now we have a spider web. Let's take all the pieces. <coughs> Right click and merge. And let's make it gray. Oops, go back. And let's move it like right there. How about that? Okay, do we want a spider on the spider web? Can the spiral be skewed so it can be wrapped around a head since it is a haunted house? He could be looking out the window in the lower level. Could the spiral be skewed? Okay. Well, let's see. guess I'm not really getting a visual on what you want to do. Wrapped around a head. Help me out. Give me more information. I'm not getting the visual of, of what you would like. Gray ghost behind the window shadow. We can put a ghost in here. Help me out with that idea there. Let's make a ghost. group him. We'll push him to the top. Let's give him some eyeballs. I'm going to create a void with the house because we don't need all that in there. We've got that little ghost. It goes black. Okay. How about a spider for the spider web? I'm going to use my circle and I'm going to make like an oblong type thing. In black. Now I'm going to use my line tool. Selecting them all. I'm going to group them. And what's next? Hopefully you're saying copy, paste, flip. these guys over here. I'm going to put a line in here so I can merge them all. And put the body over him. Change this to black. Now I've got a spider web in the haunted house. Well, how about a windy path down about a stone path to the door? Okay, I was going to do a windy path, but um, 
Okay. We could put a stone path in there. Let's grab this tool. need a little bit of imagination. Okay, let's select this one and make a funny shape. Just hitting enter to finish it. Okay, so let's select these. Okay, there's our stone path leading up to the house. Okay, how about um how about a broom? A haunted tree. Okay, we'll get back to that, that guy if we have time. Haunted tree. This one's going to be a little more of a challenge. Okay. Haunted tree. Let's turn my light up. Let's go over here and see if we have a shape that might work. Like that. Let's do it the other way. Now. this one over here. Let's go ahead and reshape this guy. So you see, you know, you can pretty much do anything you like. It's 
make these brown. I'm going to use my satin tool here to make some narrower ones. Look kind of like a haunted tree. You could make the ghost less dense and bring him forward so he's vaporous. That's a good, that's very good. Okay, so let's just, let's just pull this guy and reshape him. How about that? This is what I like about the software is nothing is forever okay and let's make him how about a spiral will that work I think a spiral will work Now we have to put him here, like that. <laughs> so you're kind of getting a feel for the fact that you can do all kinds of things with this software without any artwork, and you can learn to use the artwork. Let's make let's make a bat. I'm going to take my my uh, moon. I'm going to click it twice and rotate it. And let's just make him so that he's, let's make him sit in the tree. How about that? Okay, I'm going to take the same circle tool and I'm going to make an oval. Copy and paste and flip them over here. I'm going to put some little, don't they have little things on their head? They're called ears. Ears. Yeah, I guess the ears. Draw a box around it, group it. Draw another box, turn them black. Come on. That's sitting in the tree. The ghost does look like he's coming out the door. <laughs> he does. Hang him upside down. Oh, you people are merciless. Okay. I'm going to hang him upside down. Let's flip him. <laughs> They're right. Notice I'm just using my mirror image to get him to mirror image. That's better. Creepy Halloween house. 
Yeah, they do hang upside down. I, you know, see, you guys should be having hope. I don't even know that bats hang upside down, and I can do this. Come on, seriously. How about a witch's broomstick? Hi, I'm Larry. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was recorded during a live webinar that Holly taught some of her students for digitizing. At this point, she's finished the lesson that she had planned to teach, and for the next 20 or 30 minutes, probably, she'll go on and answer random questions from her students during the live webinar. I'm going to cut those off and I'm going to take those and turn them into little video shorts to put here on our YouTube channel later. But for now, you've got this lesson and if you enjoyed it, learned something, please give it a thumbs up. That helps our rankings with YouTube. Um, also, if you'd like a copy of the software that Holly's using so that you can digitize along with her, we can get you a 30-day trial that's fully functional if you just go to www.trygenerations.com www.trygenerations.com and we'll give you all the details there. Thanks for watching.